Hello everybody and welcome to the Maniacal Mini. So we are kind of rebooting the channel here and for the first video that I'm going to bring forward to you guys is my grimdark speed painting technique. So as you can see I already have the model prime gray and from above I'm coming in with my ink. Um, that is going to be Caraberg Crimson from Games Workshop. I'm um, just coming in through the top with the airbrush keeping it nice and light. Um, as you can see I'm going to let it just pull up. I'm not worried about pooling in, in areas or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to load it up from the top down and from now you can see that I'm coming up from the bottom with the Drakenhof Nightshade just to add a little bit of coldness to the shadow area underneath um, and then we're going to move into this next step here where we're going to take a q-tip with some alcohol now we got to be really careful here because we don't want to work down to the paint but we do want to work off this um, ink layer that we put down and the reason that we're going to do that is because as we do and we move downwards the whole time we're going to notice that it leaves this filter um, across the whole model with uh, red in the highlight areas and blue in the shadow areas and then we can um, put down our speed paint on top of that we're going to notice that it also plays off of that so it's going to get this really really awesome technique so as you can see i'm just being very very nice and gentle here not rubbing too hard just working it right back off the model um, if you need to just use a couple of different q-tips uh, sometimes you can get some of the little hairs caught if you do that just get you know um, tweezers or something just pull those back off but just be real gentle we're going to keep working it all off here and then we'll catch up in a sec Okay, continuing on now, we are going to get our dry brush loaded up with some white paint, and we are just going to very lightly dry brush over the entire surface to bring out all the details for our contrast paints a little bit later. Um, as you can see, it's still leaving some of that um, reddish, bluish tints in the recesses, which is what we want, because that's going to add a little bit more depth and color to the contrast paints that we're going to lay down on top of that. So I'm going to leave it here for a second. We'll pick back up in a second. All right, so we are going to start on the skin now, and the first color that I'm going to be using is the Barbarian Flesh from Army Painter. That is their speed paint. Um, I really like the natural flesh tone that this gives, uh, especially when we layer it over with all that um, you know, filtering that we put down earlier with the inks. Um, it's going to make the skin pop really well, and then what we're going to do is we're going to layer on top of that uh, to make it look a little bit more undead. But I'm going to let this play out, and then we'll pick it up from that step in a sec. So this is going to be Dead Flesh from Vallejo Game Collection. Um, uh, it's pretty thinned down already, so we're not going to have to worry about um, you know, adding any water or thinning it down at all. But we're just going to put this on very lightly over the skin on the most raised areas so we can leave some of that discoloration um, in the recesses. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us this really awesome, really natural looking undead flesh look. Um, and it's going to play off really well once we um, you know, add over the... Um, streak and grime a little bit later um, but as you can see i'm just going very lightly um, like i said it is already pre-thinned down so it's almost kind of going on like a glaze uh, so just make sure that you treat it like that if you need to um, kind of lighten up some of the recess areas um, you can definitely do that by just putting in a very light layer of this dead flesh over that and then you can still get that nice tone underneath that um, because it is so thinned down already so i'm just going to keep going through here over the highest areas and just working in that dead flesh
All right, so we are going to be starting to work on the clothes and the base, um, as well as some other little minor details. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is that snake bite leather. That's going to be for his belt uh, that holds up his pants there. Um, so just very lightly, we want to make sure we're not overloading the brushes here. But as you can see, we still have that kind of reddish bluish tone that all this stuff is going over. And it's adding this really natural, already kind of grim and dirty look to it um, without really having to go much over. So it also really plays in very well to that, you know, kind kind of um, how do we get the grim dark look with contrast and speed paints and I really think that this might be um, you know one of the more efficient ways to actually do that because you're creating those filtered tones and colors and variations um, and then you're laying down the main color on top of that but it's also playing off those other tones in the recesses so um, as you can see I'm just moving into the pants here that one is going to be um, Garrick's sewer uh, from the contrasting games workshop um, pretty nice gray color goes on pretty well um, good you know gray pant color um, really liked it a lot so um, kind of helps keep with the kind of muted tones that we're going for um, overall with you know the entire model here so I'm just gonna keep going along here and we'll pick it back up in a sec All right, so I'm going to start on the base here, and what I'm going to be using for the stones is Basilicanum Gray uh, contrast paint from Games Workshop. Uh, pretty good dungeon stone color um, once it goes over everything, especially once, as you can see, it's going over that filter that we put down earlier over the, you know, with the dry brush over it. And it just makes everything, you know, seem a little bit more natural, a little bit more colored, um, you know, a little bit more grim and grimy and dirty, which is what we're going for overall. So I'm just going to be using that Basilicanum Gray all over those stones, um, and then we're going to pick it back up in a sec. And just painting the rim of the base here, it's going to be Doom Death Black from um, the Two Thin Coats uh, collection from Duncan Rhodes. Um, I love their paints. Um, I haven't really had a chance to use them much on this model, but um, I am going to plan on introducing them a lot more, um, especially with the second wave that is just released. Um, I highly recommend you guys checking it out, um, but I definitely back that as soon as I could, um, so that way I can have the full collection um, and really start working in some, um, you know, higher quality um paint schemes as well as some of these more uh, quick like grim dark contrast paint schemes so um, look forward to that in the future um, like I said my my video schedule is all over the place so I, I you know I can't really promise you guys when the next one's going to be out but I can promise you that it will be quality um, and that we will have some really cool models to show for it so I'm going to let this continue here we're about to finish up the base and then we're going to move into the metallics All right, so moving into the metallic section now, the first thing I'm going to do is start out with the Sir Coats Silver from the Two Thin Coats paint line. Um, I really like their metallics, especially when you um, you know use them all and then the wash and then layer up on with the um, you know subsequent metallics after that. It really adds to this um, you know really cool look. You can almost get um, sort of almost like a non-metallic metal look with the um, if you follow the steps properly but um, it does look really really cool so I'm just layering that all that down on all the parts that are going to be that kind of steelish looking metal um, which is pretty much going to be all of them I, I really didn't change the metal too much because I wanted to keep it real simple and kind of rusty and dirty and grimy looking so um, keep it on you can just see I'm just you know popping it around these metal studs that are sticking out of his arm um, just keeping it up there there is some you know like metal pieces that are holding his arm actually together um, as well as that chain that's holding the floor um, and the belt buckle um, that's on his belt right there so there's just a couple more pieces that we're going to pick out with this um, so I'm going to let it play from here and we'll pick it up in a sec.
So now I'm bringing in the Oblivion Black Wash, and I'm just going to pop that all over the metallics that we just laid down um, to kind of dull back a little bit of the shine so we can add some of our own. Um, like I said, when you add all these things together in the steps that, you know, Duncan has laid out, the, it does come out really, really good. So as you can see, I'm just loading it all up here. I'm not putting too much on. I don't want it to pool or, you know, come up with some crazy spots like that. Um, but just very lightly, you know, putting it all over the metallics that we laid down um, nice and easy. And then we're going to start highlighting up from that. So I'll leave it there. And then and we'll pick it back up. bringing in the next metallic from the uh, two thin coats is going to be that plate armor. Um, it's just a little bit lighter, a little bit more pop of the silver. So we're just going to be, you know, layering that down on all um, of the most highest areas on those metallics. Uh, so we can kind of get that, you know, shine, natural shine look that um, it would have as it, you know, hits the lights and everything like that. Um, so I'm just going to leave it there for you guys to hang out and watch for a second. Um, and then we'll pick it back up in the next step. So moving into the final details now, uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is using AK Interactive Streaking Grime. Uh, I'm going to be laying that down all over the model. As you can see here, I'm being very, very liberal with it. I'm um, just going all over. Uh, we're going to cover the entire thing um, and then let it sit for just a second while it dries and kind of tones and stains everything. Um, and then we're going to remove it back off, but I'll pick that up in, a st in just a sec. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a Q-tip, load it up with some mineral spirits, and we're going to just gently work this back off the model. Uh, just be really careful because we did use contrast paints, and if we rub too hard, we definitely can work that contrast paint off. So that's definitely something that we're going to try and avoid our best. So we're going to make sure that we're loaded up, and we are going to very lightly and gently just work our way back down the model. Um, as you can see, I'm following a very specific direction. When I come, I'm following um, from the top down um, so that everything kind of streaks down and falls back down towards the floor of the model um, and kind of creates this kind of natural like streakiness off of some of the areas uh, while being really clean in a lot of the others um, which creates this kind of really cool like dirty filtered effect um, that will really play off of everything else that we've done up until this point um, which will create a really cool looking model in the end um, so i'll leave it there for another another second then we'll just pick it back up So what I'm going to start doing now is taking some of the Blood Angels red contrast paint and I'm going to start filling in some of these open wounds and sores and stuff that he's got all over his body um, to try and start setting up the kind of you know, nasty, open wound, bloody look. Um, this is going to help set that deep tissue look, um, which is going to play off really well later when we add some of the blood effects and things on top of that. I apologize for how blurry this part came out. Um, it, there was some kind of weird 
like auto focusing issues. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm taking some of this, um, berserker blood shade, um, which is one of the newer shade paints, uh, you know, shades that, uh, games workshop had come out with. Um, it adds this really cool, like, um, kind of like burst blood vessel look. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm coating the area directly around the wounds with that to kind of make it look real sore and reddish and kind of like freshly opened up, um, which is going to create this really cool effect. So, um, I do apologize that, <laughs> It didn't come out the best, but that is just the process of the step that I followed here. Okay, so I'm going to be bringing in some Trooper White from the Two Thins Coat selection of paints and um, for this I'm just going to be picking out the teeth in his mouth as well as his eyes um, but I am going to be using it for a couple of other steps but for right now I'm just going to let that focus while my cat interrupts everything <laughs> excuse me there um, she does get in the way of this shot a little bit so I do apologize but she's adorable so I'm not going to kick her off um, so I'm just going to keep it playing through here <laughs> while she <laughs> interrupts and I am so sorry for this guys but um, yeah so just you know picking out very lightly just going through what um, one thing that you can do too is if you do mess up and you do hit you know some white on some area that you didn't really want to or around the mouth um you can bring back in that berserker blood shade um and you can just lightly just drab that into the mouth around the area around where you hit the white and it'll actually start to take on a little bit more of a natural highlight look um while everything else gets kind of bloodied around and um you know more gory looking so as you can see i'm just picking out the eyes here um but i'll move on to the next step in a sec So because these guys obviously have some like unnatural electricity thing powering them, um, I'm going to be using some of that trooper white again, and I'm picking out this wire that is connecting all these studs that come out of his arm. And I'm going to be doing kind of like a green OSL, um, you know, kind of nasty looking wire that's, um, you know, kind of powering this guy up. So I'm just going to set up for that right now with that trooper white. And I'm just going to follow very lightly. Um, you know, just making sure I don't hit that metal that we already did earlier. Um, if you do, it's not a huge deal. You can just pop on some of that, um, plate armor and, you know, fix it up really, really easily. Um, but as you can see, just going nice and light, not pulling too much on there. Um, just keeping it real, real light. So I'll pick it up in just another sec with the ink step. All right. So I did layer over that lime green ink over all that white that we just laid down on that wire. And as you can see, it is looking pretty cool, but we want to boost it up a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin down some of that trooper white now. Um, and I'm going to be doing the same thing that we did earlier, but I'm going to be doing it in uh, less of an area, um, if that kind of makes sense. So we're just going to be picking out kind of like the center of this wire um, that we go down. We still want to leave a little bit of the green showing that we laid down on it earlier, but this is going to kind of enhance um, that natural glow look. Um, as we layer in um, some more of this white over the top of it and we're going to layer over one more step on top of this <clears throat> to kind of really enhance that glow effect and make it look a little bit more you know natural and scary so uh, I'll leave it there for you guys and we'll pick it up in a sec
All right, so now I'm going to be taking some of this dirty down rust. Um, I'm going to be putting, putting it all over the met metallics that we laid down earlier. Um, and what this does is it kind of, as it dries, it creates this almost natural looking rust when you put it over metallics, which is super awesome. Um, it comes out really, really cool. I highly recommend everybody try it. Um, at least get a small bottle of it just so you can try it out. But as you can see, I'm just putting it over all the metallics. And what's going to happen is what we can do is we can take um, something a little bit wet, like a Q-tip with some water on it. Um, and when we start to work that back off the model, it's going to um, leave this really natural looking rust spots where ever that rust um, pooled from where we took off the areas with water. Um, so it's going to add this really, really natural, cool looking rust and it's going to look awesome in the end. So I'm going to leave it there for you guys for another sec and we'll pick it back up. So the first effect that we're going to do for the blood as we finish up this model here is going to be the zombie gore from the Two Thins Coats. Um, it is a really, really nice, deep, rich red um, that will add to very deep wounds um, and make them look very natural, which is really awesome. Um, very cool look. So as you can see, I'm just going to put them in there um, and we're going to pick it up with one more blood step before we finish up this video. And our final step here is just going to be some vampire blood, and that is also from Two Thin Coats. Um, a, a little bit more of a uh, brighter red, a little bit more richer, um, but it also is going to add a lot to um, the effect as we, as you can see, I'm kind of pulling it down from the wounds um, to make it look like that blood's dripping and stuff like that. So it does add a lot of really cool effects, but for right now, that's going to wrap up this model, guys. I'm going to finish this one up and uh, call it a day. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys, um, you know, kind of take this as, you know, maybe one of those other um, you know, methods of doing your speed painting and your contrast painting. Um, you know, it can be a little bit intimidating, especially with the um, alcohol steps. Um, you know, that rubbing alcohol can really set you back if you're not careful with it. Um, so, but I hope, you know, you take it in stride and we'll see you in the next one, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.